Something remarkable took place in the years following the Second World War, when the remote Scottish island of Lewis became the storm center for a spiritual awakening. The stories that were written in the lives of people who previously had no contact with the church reverberated across Scotland, Great Britain, Europe and the world. This is the story of the Hebridean revival. A couple of weeks before Christmas, 1949, a preacher by the name of Duncan Campbell began to speak publicly about the saving power of Jesus. But this was not about church services at all. People were encountering God in the heathlands, on the fields, along the beaches, and in the houses and barns across the Isle of Lewis. At that time, the churches were very reserved and strongly aligned to their religious traditions. In fact, when Campbell first arrived, he was reprimanded by church leaders for wearing brown shoes, not the traditional black ones. Not the best way to get new people to attend church, perhaps. Musical instruments were banned in church because it was considered that they were of the devil and the congregations were told not to engage in any kind of entertainment on the Lord's Day. Unsurprisingly, island folk stayed away from the churches, particularly the young. So often the church has been known for expressions like, thou shalt not, rather than having too much to say about what God is actually like and what the message and actions of Jesus were all about. A well-known comedian once said, Christianity can be summed up in one word, and that word is no. Ironically, it seems that it's church people who have often resisted in times of change and renewal. Not so much the people in the factories, the pubs, the hospitals, and the schools. The religious establishment struggles when God chooses not to work within the straight lines of their traditions. Duncan Campbell was used so powerfully, partly because he broke with those religious traditions. He would tell the people that he imagined Jesus in the clothes of the working man, not a business suit and definitely not religious clerical robes. Jesus, he said, was not a fictional character from made-up stories, but a real person who connected deeply with the issues of society. Campbell was an extremely dramatic communicator. On one occasion, he thumped the pulpit so hard to make a point that he fractured his wrist, but he was no showman. The people said that he was the most down-to-earth man that you could ever meet. But when he stood up and spoke about the God of the Bible, something happened to him. It's obvious from the accounts of Jesus, his messages, his meetings and his miracles, that the ordinary people listened to him, loved him and left everything to follow him. When he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot and then arrested, he had to be identified. Why? Because he looked the same as everybody else. Duncan Campbell is the one that everyone talks about when the story of the Hebridean revival is recounted, but there were others, particularly Peggy and Christine Smith, who were sisters both in their 80s. They were very influential, particularly in prayer, even though one of them was completely blind and the other was bent double with arthritis. Peggy and Christine had a particular passion to see the young people impacted with this message of transformation and new life. At that time, none of them were in the church, not a single one. So the two ladies began to pray and ask God to do something extraordinary among the young.
One day, a lorry load of teenagers rocked up outside one of the churches when a prayer meeting was in full swing. Duncan Campbell went outside to speak to them, but rather than reprimanding them and asking them to keep the noise down a bit, he got in the back of the vehicle and joined in with them. And so it was that the young people were at the epicenter of this remarkable Jesus movement. One night, as the preacher was finishing his message, which was the eighth church that he had spoken that day, a dance was going on in one of the village halls. I guess it was kind of like a packed nightclub in today's language. Inexplicably, over a hundred young people fled the dance as if they were running away from the plague, burst through the doors of the church and packed the aisle to standing room only. Duncan Campbell was reflecting on that remarkable night some years afterwards and he said that he had to fight through the crowds in order to climb into the pulpit. That same night, 600 islanders descended on the police station from neighbouring villages. Apparently, one of them had heard that the police officer in charge had been converted and was now a Christian and they wanted to meet him. A few of the church folks walked the mile or so from the service to lead an impromptu meeting right there on the street. The Hebridean revival was marked by something that God did, not something that Duncan Campbell did or anyone else for that matter. In fact, nearly three quarters of the people who became Christians throughout that period were converted outside of any religious service and before any man or woman had stood up to say anything. Decades after those powerful days on that Scottish island, we find ourselves in troubled times where people are devoid of hope and struggling to make it through life. Even more alarming is that people see the church as completely irrelevant to ordinary working people and their families. We need a move of God's power once again. I pray that it will happen soon.